Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this video, I'm going to be again expanding on your toolkit of how to control systems in your Bevy application. Yes, I'm actually sticking to a theme for a while. This episode is talking about states and how they can be used with run conditions to control how your systems run, as well as how they are combined with schedulers in order to get basically zero overhead state transitions. The inspiration from this video comes from talking while I was doing a live stream, attempting to make Pong in Bevy. They mentioned something about how they thought that Bevy would be somewhat complicated using states on large complex games. But when I asked them to clarify and why they thought this, after having a small back and forth about what they were actually intending to use states for, they said I'd help them realize what their mistake was when understanding states. So I decided I should probably make a video to help more people understand how states actually work and how to use them in Bevy. I'll have a link to the live stream in the description if I remember. So what is a state? In game development, a state is a set of discrete, well, states that something can be in. They may contain additional data attributes to the state, but the state itself must change behavior at the boundaries of the state. I'm going to give four examples. The first is the transition state. These are states that can only be accessed from specific other states and identify how the application should handle transitioning from one state to another and for this reason is why they can only transition from states they have a transition behavior described you may have this kind of state system when it comes to like animations so you have a way that the player moves when they are walking and when they're running and some kind of transition to make it not look really abrupt when they change from walking to running as you can see in this diagram, it is possible for the player to go from idle to walking and from walking to running, but the player can never go from running to idle. You would need some kind of special like sliding animation or you know a grind to a halt animation in order to have the transition back to the idle state. It's the same as you can jump, you can fall, and then you can idle. You can't go from jumping to idling in the You could also attach additional information such as a scale factor to your walking state so that the player slowly gets faster and faster based on their movement speed up until a certain point where the animation no longer makes sense for the player to be moving at that speed, at which they may transition to the running speed, which may have a fixed speed, or also use a variable in order to scale the speed of the animation. So as you can see, as I start to walk the zombie, his animation is really slow. As the speed of the zombie increases, the animation speed will increase as well. And then finally, the zombie will transition to the actual running animation, independently of his speed. I quickly put this together with a plugin that I make called Bevy Sprite Animation that I have a video explaining how to use if you're interested. This will also hopefully be linked in the description. There's also another plugin that I've seen around but I don't remember what it was called and don't know if it's up to date that allows you to store non-animation related states inside of your entities as well as systems that cause state transitions on these entities. But it's important to note that this kind of animation really only works on an entity level. So it could be branched out into a world scale. But Bevy doesn't currently support entity level states. You would need to use one of these third party plugins in order to achieve this. Another entity level state that you might consider is just a linear state. Something like a plant growing, where it goes from seed to a growing plant to a flowering plant to some kind of dead state and doesn't reset without you know the player directly interfering and resetting. You may have branching states in this, such as it may go from flowering to fruiting or flowering to dead, depending on the user's input. But the idea is that the state tree will always end up at a fixed point. It always starts as seed and always ends up dead. So even when it fruits, it eventually branches back into the dead state. Though this is, again, more of a game design choice. But there's also global states. And this is something that Bevy does support. And I'm going to give two examples of this as well. And these can be very easily achieved in Bevy. So the first is a branching state or a tree style state. This one doesn't necessarily have transitions, but may use transitions. The best example for this that I have is menus. So you would say that the main menu has the option to go into the play state, the setting state, or the credits state. And then say the setting state may go into the mouse or keyboard setting. The biggest advantage of this is that in older versions of Bevy, they used to have a stack system that let you tell the game, what state it's currently in, and then stack transitions on top of that, which means that you could, in theory, go into menus and out of menus without needing any kind of order to it. Instead, they've replaced this with the only ability of setting what the next transition is or whether there's no transition happening at all. 
This means that you can only really make logic deciding on what transition, not the previously happened transitions. This is where the tree approach would work really well, since if you're in the settings menu, you can just have a catch all button that travels one ancestor up. So the back button doesn't need special logic for if you're in a sub menu or just one of the menus, since they can just follow to the parent when they click the backspace button. This also means that you can add transition logic to Bevy to spawn and display the menu when the menu button is clicked and the state changes and clean up the menu when the state transitions to a different menu. This is probably the only place that I regularly use states no matter what game I'm developing. And another example, and this is my go-to example when I talk about states, since it is the one that directly Bevy implements and doesn't require any additional things. And that's just arbitrary states. You can jump from one state to another with no need for transitions. You may want transitions, but you don't need them. So this is something like a weather system, where you can go from sunny to rainy to snowing. You just specify to Bevy which one it goes to, and it runs the appropriate systems. There's no real need for a transition from one system to another. You can just go from sunny to raining in, in a single frame. Uh, again, this may not be the best approach for your specific game, but think Minecraft, there's no, it starts to rain lightly and gets heavier, it just is raining or it's not raining. So you can transition these states directly and they just basically work like a pointer into an array of states where it's, you just sort of specify which state you're in. I do want to really stress that these are only four classifications and examples that I've come up with, and there's no reason you couldn't mix and match different parts of these, since it's all just implementation details. The only real difference between them is how you actually go about doing this. Though, again, Bevy doesn't currently allow states to be attached to individual entities, and instead, a states only apply to world. But, for example, you could make the weather system use a transition style so that when it goes from sunny to raining, the rain may start slowly with clouds and then start to rain. And then you could also transition from rain to a thunderstorm. And then from a thunderstorm back to clear skies. Or back to just regular rain. But this just all requires you to do certain implementations and is up to the user. So onto how Bevy actually does states. A state in Bevy is an enum or a struct that implements the state trait. This requires it to implement sync, send, clone, partial equal, equal, hash, debug, and default. Originally, Bevy didn't require default, but has since removed the ability for you to specify the initial entering state and must use the default of the particular struct that you're using. Bevy also has a derived for states that can be called on any dataless enum. This allows for states to be really easy, maintained and managed as long as they do not contain unique data for the state and instead is just an indicator of what state it's in. The reason Bevy needs to do this is because it needs to be able to iterate through each type in order to make the different schedulers for the state transitions. And this wouldn't be possible if you had something like continuous data, like a float. How do you specify each possible state for the float? But it is actually, in fact, possible to implement states with continuous data like this, but it does require a custom implementation that can distinguish what the different iterations of the state are, since states must be discrete in number. For example, you could have a state raining with a float value attached to it, where if the value is less than 10, it's a different state than if the value is greater than 10. But this is somewhat frowned upon in Bevy. You should use resources for this instead, since resources are more versatile than data attached to the state directly. When adding a state to your Beverly application, you use the useState method. This will take in a generic parameter to declare what type of state it uses. It will then insert the required resources along with the default state position. The state resource is the resource that you would use if you wanted to check what the current state is and allows you to read with the .get method what state your application is currently in. The next state resource is used to set the state. It contains an option of the next state. If the option is none, it means that the state will not transition to the next frame. But if the option is some, it will transition to that state next frame. As of Bevy point 11, it will no longer transition from itself to itself. So if you set the state to be in current state, it won't transition. Bevy will then insert schedulers for each of the entering and exiting states on a system. Pre 0.11, Bevy used to insert a system set called on update for each state variant. This has since been removed and instead you should use run if in state instead. Bevy also includes two systems for each state, the run enter schedule, which will run the on enter of the default state exactly once, just so that that logic gets a run when the application starts. 
and then also the apply state transition exclusive system. This system is the system that's actually responsible for updating the state each frame. This system runs in the pre-update stage by default. It will extract the next system. If it is some, it will set the current state to being that state before running the on exit and on enter of the respective states. It is possible to add multiple instances of this system to your application in order to have more than one state transition per frame. Although I would not recommend this unless it is absolutely necessary since these are exclusive systems and cannot run in parallel with the rest of your game and will therefore create direct performance loss for every single one added. If you want to use states to control when a system will run, you have three options. First is to use the run if in state condition. This is a combination of the run if method, which will then check the condition in state. This will mean that the system will run if in the state. For example here, run if the weather is thunderstorm. This can also be inverted with the not modifier. So the rain system will run in any state that is not sun. Next, you can add systems to the on enter and on exit schedules. This is done by when you call the on add systems, you declare on enter or on exit with the appropriate state and then, and then what systems to add to that particular scheduler. Your final option is to write your own custom run conditions that will have specific behavior. Bevy has a few of these. For example, state changed run condition. This would be used if you wanted more generic behavior for any time the state changed, rather than a direct transition from one state to another. You could also expand run conditions to do basically anything you wanted. Say, check if a specific state has entered and a specific state was exited and running transition logic on that, rather than running a direct on exit, then followed by a on enter of an unknown state. You could make logic that only runs when transitioning from one state to another. Okay, I'm just going to quickly plug my Patreon before we move on to some examples. So, thank you for my Patreons for supporting me. If you want to support the channel, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below. Okay, moving on to some examples. In this example, the yellow sun in the top corner will disappear when you press the spacebar and enter the raining state. The rain will then start falling. If you press page up, the rain will start falling at a higher speed. If you press page down, the number of drops spawned per second will decrease. If you press spacebar a second time, it'll enter thunderstorm mode, which will cause a random flash to happen, a random spacing of time, one to two seconds. So at the beginning, when we add our state example plugin, we first initialize ourselves the weather state. The weather state is just an enum that has sun, rain, and thunderstorm conditions. Also need to add an on enter system, sun. This will spawn the sun in the top right corner and remove the rain resource. The on exit is then added, which will remove the sun and add the rain back in. We then add systems, change state, which is what handles the spacebar incrementing the state, rain system, which doesn't have any restrictions on it, so that the rain will continue to fall when we transition back to the sun, but has a check in it to make sure that no additional rain will start spawning. Lightning, which only runs if we're in the thunderstorm state, and change rain only runs if we're not in the sun state, so we can't change the speed of the rain when we're not in that state, since that would be a waste of compute when we reset the rain at the end of the system. In the weather enum, I set up a transition. So when I call next, it will automatically determine which state should follow which state. So sun will turn into rain, rain will turn into thunderstorm, and thunderstorm will turn back into uh, sun. The change state function takes in a mutable reference to the next state and a immutable reference to the current state. It checks to see if the player has pressed spacebar. And we then tell the next state to set itself to being whatever the next state after the current one is. The add and remove rain functions just insert or remove the resource. The rain system itself first moves each raindrop down. It then checks to see if the raindrop is off the bottom of the screen and removes it. Then if the rain resource exists, it will run the rest of the code that will determine how many drops to spawn and then spawn each drop randomly across the top of the screen. The lightning system simply takes in a time and a time since the last lightning strike. It will then check and spawn for a single frame a lightning square, which is just a white square that covers the entire screen. It will then despawn that the next frame. It will also set its local time to a random value between 0 and 2.5. This value is then counted down each frame and then we'll spawn more lightning when the timer reaches zero. And that's how the entire weather system is set up.
I hope you enjoyed the video and this little example section, and I will hopefully see you in the next video.